Hello, Guilty Feminist. It's Deborah. The Guilty Feminist is live at King's Place in London on the 31st of January and at Vicar Street in Dublin, my favourite venue. Come along, Alison Spittle and I will be back on the 14th of March. And if you've got tickets for Campus Christmas, please put the 31st of March into your calendars. That show has had to be put off because unsurprisingly, the pandemic has crashed its way into our Christmas again. Our UK tour starts on the 5th of March. We are going all over the UK. We are sure to be coming somewhere near you. We're also going all over Australia and New Zealand in July. So check out the links in the show notes or go to guiltyfeminist.com to find out where we are coming near you and when and get tickets for yourself and other loved ones, feminists in your life. I'm so excited to be able to be back out on tour, coming to you, being near you. Uh, We will make sure all the shows are COVID safe, depending on where we are with restrictions. And we really can't wait to be back in the room with you celebrating feminism, comedy, and all things Guilty Feminist. And now on with the podcast. I am a feminist, but tonight when I walked into the dressing room, wearing what can only be described as a dinner jacket or tuxedo with a black tie, somebody went, oh my God, Deborah Francis White for James Bond. (laughs) And I immediately thought, my God, that script would have to be incredibly fucking misogynistic for me to turn it down. (laughs) I would be looking to justify my way through that shit. If I was the first female James Bond, and I would insist on being first female lesbian James Bond... Hot. Yeah, I would. I would. I'm bisexual. It's okay. Wait, no, be bi bond. Yes. Bi oh, bond. bond. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Shake an amsto. Do you feel me? <laughs> yes. Okay, bi bond. Yes. This is just a pitch. If you're listening, the broccolis. I'm going to send you a picture of myself in this dinner jacket, and then you can decide on your own uh-huh. time. But, but, just think about it. Hot lady by Bond. Yeah, it's a vibe. I'm just saying. Now, I, of course we would want that script to be as feminist as possible, but it is James Bond. You gotta do what you gotta do. And I would insist on being called James as well. None of this Jane Bond. Fuck that. I'm yeah. James. Yeah. My, the name's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> James by Bond. James by Bond, yeah. I'm just saying. Uh, oh, dear. Um, so, I'm a feminist, but... I'm moving house this week, and when my, like, 64-year-old moving guy who, like, nobody told him to have a moving business, okay, but um, when he obviously could have used my help, I pretended to be too weak. (laughs) I was like, oh, no, I was like, so much to do with the move. Ah." I was like, I got to touch this, lift this light one. I was like, I'm just so... You quit the industry or pick up the damn box. Wow. Quit the industry or pick up the damn box. I'm telling you. I don't know what to say. Look, man, you had an hourly rate. I was like, this is a hardcore. You, you got to do the work, sir. He's a white man as well. I was like, no, nah, you're going to do that work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You are about to go back. Mic drop. You, Mic drop. you are about to go back to America. So we have got this is Kima's very last gig yeah. of any sort in this country yeah. until she goes back to America. Um, oh. But you're coming back. Don't don't say ah oh, because I feel much more sad than you do. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you've got to go back to Texas where yeah. currently yeah. they currently they are daily eroding your rights. Oh, They've been busy so busy eroding so your rights good. since you've I been I better gone. not get sick because I'm uninsured and I better not get pregnant because I'll have that baby. <laughs> 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 are you uninsured over there? Yeah. Oh, so, shit. um, basically, Can if you're Can you not over, get a temporary insurance? I don't know what that means. It probably is. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds very expensive, David. <laughs> So basically, if you're under 26 and your parents have a job where they have insurance to do their job, then you can be on that. But then when you're over 26, you better have a job where you can have insurance to do your job. But I'm a comedian. Um, 
And so I'm just glad to be uh, doing, uh, living here. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Uh, If if, uh, UK visas and immigrations, if you're listening, (laughs) uh, I I love you so much. (laughs) (laughs) Love you. I love you. (laughs) Can I, can I, uh, there's there's no like temporary, if you're going back to America for two weeks, there must be. There must oh, be a little yeah. temporary. I'm going to look into it for you. Okay. Could somebody Google? She didn't say she was going to pay for it. So I don't know. How well, <laughs> so I'm in any you've been doing so much TV. You must be able to afford six weeks of insurance. Now, come on here. Says so, so, you know what America is? We'll what pass a hat Traveling around. insurance. Is but that does, what travel, does travel insurance work if you are American in America? Yes. I guess so. Yeah. Oh, are you in yeah. insurance? When you go back there, that's oh, what you brilliant. do. Okay. Oh, my God. You can renew it and get it for another year. What? And then be like, I'm traveling. So she was saying you can get it for a year and then you can renew it for another year and then you can just be a perpetually wink, wink, traveling. Well, you sort of always are because when you're here, you're traveling because you're American. When you're there, you're traveling because you live in Britain. I'm a Rolling Stone. <laughs> can, can, I, can anyone Google Rolling, Rolling Stone traveling insurance? <laughs> See if we can get Kima a policy. For stones on the road. I'm a feminist, but I'm incredibly fucking jealous of Pete Davidson. Oh. How the fuck does Pete Davidson get the women King he gets? King of New York. How? How? Have you seen Pete Davidson? He is the most dysfunctional man. He is not handsome. What? What? Just what? a little bit. Just to name... I'm just going to name off some names of women. Not just that it's rumoured that he was with. He's walking down the street... There's pap shots of him holding hands and making out with them. Ariana Grande. Kate Beckinsale. Now, people are not reacting hard enough. Do you know what I mean? The guy from Saturday Night Live. The vampire. Who, yeah. Honestly, what is he bringing to the party? <laughs> Margaret He's Qualey. He's the party. Margaret who? Qualey, Qualey, who Qualey, that? Qualey. Andy McDowell's daughter, unbelievably beautiful actress. Just brilliantly talented, but like literally the most beautiful woman in the world or top ten. You know, like she's amazing. <laughs> And now, Kim fucking Kardashian. What? What is his? Is his dick a magic wand? Uh. The fuck? What? The actual fuck? The only reason he hasn't had Beyonce is he doesn't. He hasn't asked. He hasn't. They haven't been in the same room at the same time. I can only assume he doesn't want to have sex with Her Majesty the Queen. Oh, because it would been done. Yeah, oh yeah, she'd be down on Brighton Beach having fish and chips with him. One thousand. <laughs> I wish I could say that I don't see it. I wish I could say that. Kima Bob, you're going to get famous very soon. Look. And if you Most go out all. with fucking Pete Davidson, no, I'm not. don't you dare. Look. Here's... You always say you'll go out with anyone but white men because you believe oppression builds character. Look, here's the thing. It does. But here's the thing, okay? I, I, I wish I could say that I've never seen it. But I feel like, I feel like sometimes if your life is going well... Sometimes you just throw, you just need to throw a little dirty dick into the mix. <laughs> just, you're like, my life is, I'll be like, I'm on my shit. I'm responsible. You know, I'm weighed down with this responsibility. Let's just throw in a little chaotic dick. You don't have medical insurance. You're fine. <laughs> you need to fuck Pete Davidson. I'm not saying, I'm saying, I gotta say how would it happen. I feel like... You better get medical insurance before you fuck that dirty dick. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> You're going to earn that. I want to see full paperwork. I want to see your taxes done two years in advance. But, and then, you, can say, then, then, can see, then you can start fucking Pete Davidson. I can see how it happens. I don't know. I don't know. It's fascinating. You are so going to fuck that I'm Davidson not gonna, boy. I'm not going to do it. I might do it. <laughs> I might do it. I don't know. Oh, my God. I don't know. But can, do you think he'd even bother, like, in bed? Like, he looks so lazy. He looks like he's just like, ah. he just lie there and let you do it. Know. You never know. He, he could be one of those people that gets just like, he's like, hey, let me tell you something. Sorry, this is just, I'm so vulnerable. It's hard for me to say. Oh, Sorry. God. Yeah, he would, he would. Sorry, I've been through a lot. I'm really tired from comedy. Sorry. Um, I just, like, Love eating pussy? Like, I don't know. <laughs> like, he I'm is impressive. a white man who does comedy raps. You never know. I don't know. Uh, I. It's interesting. Listen, if, you know what? If you sleep with Pete Davidson, don't tell me. And 
and I'm I good. don't want to see it in the tabloids. I I'm don't want to see it in the tabloids. You better do that underground. It's a secret. Yeah. That's how you got to do it. Oh, wow, is that how it made you feel? No, it's, it's, it's allergies. I'm a little bit allergic to my cats. Oh, mm. love. The things we do for love. Um, I'm, I'm a feminist, but um, recently I boned... I didn't tell you about this. You know there's an audience here, right? Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, recently I yeah. boned... Yeah. <laughs> Who? Who did you I know! Uh, <laughs> There's a really, like, tall, like, super muscly dude. And it was, like, just insane body, a personal trainer. What do you do? Just work out all day? Insane. And I don't even know. Like, I'm a feminist, but recently I boned a very big, muscular man. And I just, like, the sex was so bad, but the whole time I just felt like a little lady. (laughs) 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 Like, I was just like, ah! I'm so fem. <laughs> I was like, me, petite. Uh. <laughs> I was like, your body's so big and I'm so small. <laughs> I really relate to that. It was insane. I was like, I need to psychoanalyze this. <laughs> it was horrible. Oh my God, it was the worst head of my life. It was so bad. It was the most apathetic head I've ever received. And you haven't even done Pete Davidson yet. Uh, no! Oh, my God, it was so bad. And I know what it's like to give head with enthusiasm. That's how I know I yeah. wasn't receiving it. It's like, you know, it's horrible. Oh, my God. I'm a oh. feminist, but do you have this man's number? Yeah. Would he relatively make me feel small, do you think? I think so. Because I think, how tall are you? I'm 5'6". Yeah, I'm five nine and a half. He wasn't more big than us. But, but I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm very, just, I'm very just, broad. Just a little. I don't know what it is. It's a very like, just like, not even primal, but just like primitive. Like yeah. I was like, this is real. Mm, I was like, this is very sad stuff. of me. Yeah, it's I was like, brain. this is very sad mm. of me. But also, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. I hear that. I'm a it's feminist, bad. but uh, today. <laughs> There were workmen doing some work on our flat and I heard them come in and he said, well, he's on the phone. The guy's on the phone. Mm." And then he came in to the bedroom where I was and I was in bed. Like, And I had done a show last night, so don't judge me because you don't get up eight hours before you go to work either. Um, But I, you don't. Uh, So I was still in bed at like 11 o'clock and I had like a robe on and he came in and he said, oh, um, would it be all right if we brought something in off the terrace and put it inside because so we can do the work and I said oh yes sure and then he went back out and he said I asked his wife she said it was okay and I felt so Betty Draper and I just had this moment of going oh my god I'm a wife and it was like this to someone I'm a wife like that's because they're trying to they're like well the wife won't know like yeah. the man won't know, because they're in a different bubble from me so I was cool with it but it's like, oh well, God. I don't know. The captain's not available. Yeah. I guess we'll ask the I'll little ask lady. Yeah. It's just such a strange moment for me because I heard them talking about me. And I thought, well, of course I'm the wife. I'm in bed. He's on a conference call. I'm in bed in a floral robe. Yeah, you're the, eating you're the tea, wife. Having tea and toast at 11 on a fucking silver tray. There was the no boy. silver tray, but he saw one. That's the story as he'll tell it. I'm there like, you know, like, oh, ha, ha, ha. I actually did have to cover my my breasts a bit. Like, my breasts were exposed when he walked into the room. And I had to go like that. And it felt like such a Betty Draper move. And, like, I was just like, I don't quite know how I feel about this, but there's something about it that's kind of stimulating. And so I... I did wear a floral dress today, is all I'm saying, which I would not normally do. But I just thought, sometimes it's nice to be a character. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to live like that. But I just, like, you know when you dress up, like, in this little 60s, like, I don't know, you wear, like, a a mini skirt and tights and boots, and you think, I'm going to be, like, a 60s Carnaby Street model. I'm going to wear, like, a little hat. And, you know, (laughs) no one else is seeing that when they see me. I know that they're not seeing that, but I feel like Twiggy. I'm going to wear a little hat. I'm going to wear a little hat. I'm just going to, like, sell it. I just sometimes am a character, and sometimes my characters are not the most feminist characters, but it's a play space. Stop judging me. That's my kink. Wow, that's mm. beautiful. That's touching. <laughs> I, am, I am a feminist, 
but I am so tired of supermodels being on the streets with me. <laughs> I'm just I'm just like I'm just trying to live my life. Well I'm, stop hanging out with Pete Davidson then. Because that's what he's surrounded I'm, by. I'm just I'm just like I don't know. Like ah uh, I don't even know. I don't know how to explain it. But I'm just like, why are you so gorgeous? All the time. Where do you see supermodels all the time? Just about. <laughs> do you mean women who you perceive to be of supermodel Yes, and, it's and, and that's a me problem. It's not a them problem. It's a me problem. I don't know. I just, okay, so I was with my friend at a bar and um, we sat there and um, it was a, my friend was a queer woman and goes, do you see that beauty queen over there? And I knew exactly who she was talking about. She was talking about the tall, skinny girl with the long, curly hair. And I was like, why is that what this person is called? Why are you not calling me that? And why is she outside? (laughs) (laughs) I once sat next to Lick Hole in a club. Lick Hole? No, Lily Cole. (laughs) (laughs) But now that's how she'll be known. As Licky Hole, <laughs> Lily Cole, the Thank model. You. And I sat next to her, and it was like a nightclub. And <laughs> you I think it was a Chanel party, but we crashed it. That's what happened. Oh. Um, but she sat next to me, and I looked at her, and she's Lily Cole. So do you know what she looks like? She's like a foal, Lily Foal. Like, uh, but, you know, like just limbs. And, and I just looked at her, and I was like, she's like super beautiful. And I just was like, I am not intimidated by you at all, because you look like someone out of Lord of the Rings. You're, su- you're another species. There's just a sort of elegant drapage of limbs. And those women as well, by the way, they do not wear clothes. They wear little bits of silk that always look but, like they're going to fall off. But here's the thing. We have to, in our brains, be like, we're all the same and we're all very valuable, right? Like, that's what we're supposed to do. That's the thing. That's the, like, hey, we're all great. We're all valuable. We're all beautiful. Yeah. And then... Um, you know, you sit at a bar and you're like, well, great, well, valuable, well, beautiful. And your own friend goes, do you see that beauty queen over mm. there? And it's not fucking talking about me. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I really do believe in diversity of beauty for others. <laughs> I myself, I want to look like I could be on a fucking bus stop. And I know that's ridiculous. And I've, I've, I've come a long way in my journey. I'm not that bad anymore. But there's a little piece of me every now and again that just comes alive in those situations. I think you're seen as one of the most attractive women in London, though, Kima. Oh, yeah. First of all... Yeah, I, you think you are. This I think... isn't about you wanting to fuck me, Deborah. This is... <laughs> <laughs> this, is... <laughs> this is just a kind of public Me Too situation. <laughs> where I'm hitting on you at work. <laughs> no... But I, I appreciate what you're saying, but you're like my friend, you have to say that. No, but, but like, no, you know, no. Uh, but, like, uh, but we're not supposed to feel this way, and I'm very upset that I do, if that makes sense. So I'm a feminist, but I am upset with how much I am uncomfortable with, with models. people being outrageously gorgeous yeah. and how I see myself in comparison to that. But can I just say, lately, when you've been doing the glow-ups for TV, you are uh, in a... Oh, fucking I league fucking, of your own. Oh, I fucking let them go at it. Like, so you go to the TV and then they go in the makeup chair and they go, what do you like? And I go, bitch, what can you do? <laughs> she does. I've seen her say those exact I like, words. I was like, just go hard. I've oh, literally no. seen her. I've been in the makeup chair next to her and I've seen her say that. I was like, bitch, like, let's go. I'm like, eyes, lips, what's up? Yeah. And she comes out with these like big geometric eyes and, you know, beautiful red lips and shiny. And and they, because she lets them do whatever they They want, they spend all day on her. And I just go, oh, something a little subtle, maybe a little light, smoky eye. And they're like, bup, 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 bup. No. They're fucking up. They're getting paid. If you can pay people, let them do the work. Yeah. (laughs) She's, while she's ordering men to carry boxes, she's telling these women, First of all, and that man, he asked me when he was sending me my invoice, he goes, who's, who's going to pay for it? Can you get some money from daddy? Yeah. Can I get some money from daddy? Yeah, I'm glad I made him lift that shit. Yeah, that's not cool. That really isn't cool. You can't get some money from, from daddy. daddy. No. Um, daddy. I mean, can you though? No. It's oh, just annoying. No. no. He won't give you any. 
Live from King's Place in London, the Spontaneity Shop presents The Guilty Feminist. With me, Deborah Francis White, guest co-host Kima Bob, and our very special guest, Celia A.B., talking about therapeutic measures. This is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and our hypocrisies and insecurities which are my own. Who's talking to you? <laughs> I can't believe you stepped on undermine them. That's people's favourite part. That's the chorus. I've got to say that again. And insecurities which undermine them. I'm Deb Francis White. Uh, with me is Kima Bob. And we are talking about therapeutic measures. Yeah. Um, we're going to get into that in a little bit when uh, we have brought our blank guest on. Were you trying to do a COVID kiss there where you sort of keep your head away from each other? It looked like you gotta a bring, piece of modern dance. It's just like you put in, you can touch bodies, but you got to keep your I head away. I do that now. Away. I do that. I keep do your that. head away. I do that. Away. But you did it so extremely, it looked like a bit of that bit in Dirty yeah. Dancing where he goes like that. Swoobins, um, when they were in the underground club and they were like, oh, do the watermelon. I don't know. <laughs> It's been a while since you've seen it. (laughs) She carried a watermelon. They don't do the watermelon, although. (laughs) It's like, what's that song? I just remember there was a watermelon, and that's when the dancing was the dirtiest, and they're like, "Mm." That's right. And everyone was doing, uh, like, crotch touches, and they're like, ow. And I was like, this dancing is dirty for real. Yes, yes. (laughs) It's But that crotch grinding Mm. is probably quite safe. I mean, it's not safe during COVID, obviously. Don't take that away from (laughs) the (laughs) But it's safer than the sort of cheek-to-cheek, isn't it? (laughs) Because they're like, you know, just stay, stay (laughs) just a little bit longer. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little bit. I don't know all of the words, it's true. It feels like you do. That's <laughs> I know a lot of the words of Dirty Dancing. If I had to, if, if you put a gun to my head and said, and please don't, but if you did and said, recite one movie from beginning to end. You could do that one. Yeah, don't put, take the gun out, it's too violent. No need for that. Um, if you said, I'll give you a million quid for, for the feminist charity of your choice, what? because we understand the non-capitalist a uh, space that we're playing yeah, in. Yeah, you're, you're trying to save other lives. This isn't about you. That's right. So that's you right. better get those words right. That's right. Gracious. That's... <laughs> uh, if you said, I'll give you a million quid, but you've got to recite a movie beginning to end and not miss any lines of dialogue, my best chance would definitely well, be Dirty Dancing. I don't even... I don't know if I could, because I stopped smoking weed not long ago. You know this, but... <laughs> Yeah. I smoked a lot of weed for a long time. I don't remember much of what I watched over the past, like, ten years. <laughs> I have no idea what's in those films. <laughs> that sounds like that said it's going to end with Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea what's in those films, Your Honor. Yeah. I might be in those films. <laughs> it does, sounds a lot. Sounds a lot like, sounds a lot like that. Know. Let's just see. We think we've got people uh, on here. Uh, Trisha JB says hi from Danbury, Connecticut. Um, Danbury, Connecticut. Connecticut. Um, yeah. Do you know? I learned how to spell it because it's like connect. I cut. <laughs> did you have to do the spelling bees that we see in America so much? Uh, I don't think I ever did a spelling bee, but I did uh, go to this uh, school that was like obsessed with Africa. Love it. Um, and one of my teachers, in order to go into the classroom. There was a week where she made us name a different country in Africa. Uh, and if you didn't, like, so there are, like, 54. Yeah. And it was five days, so she split them up. And she was like, you got to name 10 countries or you can't uh, come in the room. And that, that was a lot of people were late for class. <laughs> people don't know enough. People don't know enough. But then so what no happens? spelling bees, I... just, like, Africa bees. Uh, <laughs> but here's the problem with that. If you say to the children who cannot name the countries, you are not allowed to enter the classroom. You You've sort of learn. got that the wrong way round. <laughs> it's the ones that can name all the countries in Africa yeah. and divide them by nine. Yeah, to They're teach the, the rest ones. of them? Yeah, they can stay in the hallway. They know. Yeah, those it's, other kids, you got to get them in. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, it's very it's challenging. It's like our whole process. Laura from Leeds, hello. Um, well, hold on. I think you just, you just blew my lid right now. Is that what school is supposed to be like? Yes. School is about 
So for me, you edu- learn that you don't show up knowing you learn that. Yes, for me, education is about finding things people can't do and showing them how to do them. Whoa. The problem with school is they treat you as if you should already be able to well, do this. You should this. know it already to yes. get, even get in the room. It, that's how they act. Wow. Teachers like cross if you don't know things. I'm like, if I know everything, you've got no job. Yeah, baby. you don't have a job. That's pretty deep. Um, I'm that sure there are many brilliant teachers listening who are. Who are saying, no, these children are numpties and they need to learn. <laughs> Just give us a cheer if you're a teacher. Hey, hello. Yeah. Um, any insights for us there? Mm. What was that? Huh? Little, little pricks. What? Little, did you say little pricks? <laughs> you you said didn't say little, little pricks. Little pricks? <laughs> little, you said they're thick. <laughs> And not, not oh, wow. in the sexy way with multiple C's. <laughs> okay. Better not be, <laughs> Your Honor. <laughs> I was not looking at those children's hips, Your Honor. I see. I think she meant thick with a K, but I also feel that's not inclusive language. <laughs> uh, uh, Laura from Leeds says, recently started listening to the podcast and I am now 90% more feminist. Whoa. She's taken our quiz. Wow. We should do a Buzz BuzzFeed. Feed. We should do a BuzzFeed <laughs> Guilty Feminist quiz. Because I think I would come up different things on different days. Some days more guilty, some days more feminist. Oh. Even minutes in the days. Life is hard. My medical nightmare was I thought I had I felt like a mass in my tit. Yeah, keeping it chill, mass in my tit. And I was like, um, mm. I was like, oh, I gotta check that out. It's important. You gotta check out masses in the tits. People, you check your tits, check your balls. Everybody, check everything. You gotta check the lumps. Lumps. No, people don't like lumps unless you're Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> and the song "My Humps." She loves a lovely lady lump. Check it out. That's right. That's, That's right. It. So, but if you find a lady lump, check it out. Um, and so, <laughs> so I went to go check this it out. This is a great. Public information. I think so. Episode. It feels very PSA. Yeah. And so I went to go to the doctor. I was like, oh, a little lamp, what's going on? And they're like, we could do an ultrasound, and that you'll have to come back in several weeks to follow up, and then we'll know. Or we could do a biopsy, and you'll know today. And there was a lot of enthusiasm of, and you'll know today, and like type thing. And I was like, oh my God, fast results. That sounds like the best option. Why wouldn't I obviously go for that? So I did. They stuck the yeah. thick needle into no. the side of my tit, yeah. sucked out a little bit no. of my lump. They were like, this is fine. Now don't worry about it. But uh, congratulations. B- benign mass. Uh, please give us $1,400 for this information. And I was like, girl, nobody was talking to me about prices when everybody was trying to touch my titties. What's going on? I was like, nobody was talking about it. It's crazy out there. Don't have problems in America. Now, that is great advice. Don't have problems Don't in have America. Don't have problems. Have problems somewhere I know, else. but we had the NHS on here last week, and they were telling us, and the NHS campaigners... Don't have problems here either? They were saying quite soon, don't have problems here either. Oh, um, no! But, no, no, there's a big campaign about it because they are selling it off. But that's not what we're talking about today. Please check that episode out if you haven't, and check out the campaign uh, that Jen Brister and Francesca Martinez mm-hmm. is doing. Would you like to hear some stand-up comedy? Then please, welcome to the stage, the incredible Kimo Bob! Incredible is a strong word. Hi, guys. Great to be here with you. Staying warm. Got those scarves on. Yes, love a scarf. Um, We're meant to be talking about therapy today, um, therapeutic measures, and I love therapy. It's my shit. Sometimes... I get so addicted to self-help that I stress myself out. (laughs) Like, I'm just like, you can be better than this. You read the book. You know what to do. (laughs) It's it's, it's so mad. Um, My top therapeutic measure tip is definitely um, don't get COVID, um, especially if you live alone, uh, because COVID isolation is not a fucking joke. <laughs> and I thought that I would uh, need to be worried about, I don't know, the loss of smell and taste that I did experience, or like a cough or the fever. 
of something, but turns out what I needed to be afraid of was being trapped in my house with my own thoughts. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I see some nods of recognition. Yeah. It's not a good time. It's absolutely insane. Um, let's just say that I left my 10, 11 days of isolation not being able to smell things, being able to taste things a little bit and needing to go to therapy twice a week. <laughs> I was like, hey, we got a lot to discuss. I was in the stillness. A lot of things rose to the surface. It's a mess. We got to dig through it. <laughs> so I guess what I'm saying is, if you're a very well-adjusted, healthy person with a nice sense of self and a sense of like mental stability, go ahead, catch the vid, baby. Have a great time. <laughs> um, but if, if you can't go more than two weeks without uh, someone uh, clapping for you in an audience, <laughs> don't put a mask on. Uh, <laughs> save yourself, protect yourself. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, it was absolutely insane. Oh, oh. oh, this world, oh, this life. Um, I appreciate therapy a bunch. I am grateful for it. Um, I'm shout out the NHS for uh, like providing it for people. Ah, I love that. Oh God, you have no idea. Oh, it's so good. And I think um, a lot of people are afraid of um, therapy therapists. Um, one, once you get over the financial barrier, which is very real. Um, or once you get off the wait list, which is very real. One of my friends just got told that she needed a specialist, and she'll be like, so I'll be in therapy sometime in the middle of next year or the one after that. <laughs> like, Once you get off the wait list and once you get past the financial barriers, there's also the factor of like judgment. Um, and like a judgmental therapist is like a judgmental gynecologist. <laughs> like, you don't want to tell them the truth. <laughs> You're like, I have no idea how that happened. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. No risky behaviors. No risky behaviors. No, no, nothing, <laughs> nothing like that at all. Uh, I find myself sometimes offering like, what feels like little nuggets of wisdom to, like, Uber drivers these days. Have you ever had conversations with them where, like, they, like, open up a bit and then they're like, yeah, but I just feel like, why should I be at home relaxing? I need to be working all the time. And I'm like, hey, man, I understand, but sometimes we got to enjoy life. And I'm like, whoa, like... I feel like this was an even exchange here. <laughs> like, uh, I was like, hey, wow, oh, sounds like a lot of stress, but um, your daughter does sound like she's growing up to be very opinionated, but that's a great thing. Um, it's like, don't worry about that. And it sounds like you're an awesome dad. Don't worry about the fact that you work so much. Am I a therapist? <sighs> no. <laughs> no, I'm not, but I will be for 20 minutes in your back seat. <laughs> so good. Um, but, yeah, I mentioned that I've stopped uh, smoking weed, which, like, hey, everybody's doing the weed now. People love it. Oh, everybody's like, oh, I'm vaping. Oh, I'm doing CBD. Oh, yeah, congratulations, okay? Yeah, have fun, you new age weed people. I'm an OG weed person, okay? I'm a veteran, all right? I was smoking before it was socially acceptable, okay? How about that? Yeah, what, are your parents concerned about you? You don't know that life. Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's such a, it's such a like, um, nice like, headspace to be in, to not feel like... Um, like I, I just don't want to be controlled by things. Like I want to be con in control of my headspace and my life. Um, and literally, what's so weird about not smoking weed uh, before I go to bed is I have dreams now. And I don't mean, like, aspirations. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, Martin Luther King ones. Like, I have fucking night visions, man. <laughs> My brain is, like, thinking about shit while I'm asleep, and it's crazy because a lot of what I thought 
what classified as nightmares are what my dreams are. <laughs> They're horrible. It is fucking scary in there, man. It's always like a life or death experience. I'm always like running for my life or some shit. Or like back in my high school where my cheer coach is like, Bob, why can't you do the middle splits? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, coach. Like, it's a bit fucked up. I might go back to smoking weed. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh no. Oh no. But I do. I want to be in control of my my headspace, and I think that for me is what any kind of like therapeutic measures or self help I do is about. Like I would just like to understand myself better, to be in a better place of self acceptance, so that I can put good things out into the world. Since I've chosen a career path where I'm just constantly vomiting things out into the world. You see me. You see me vomiting. Um, and um, one of the things I decided to do was face my fear of uh, spiders. I wanted to try to change my relationship with them because uh, they don't deserve how we treat them, okay? They don't deserve all the propaganda, all right? <laughs> like fucking, like everyone's like, ooh, Halloween spider, spooky. No, this is just when they mate, Okay? <laughs> They like the weather and stuff. And when they come in your house, it's because they like the humidity and they want to spend some time with you or whatever. They're just trying to eat, have a good time. They're just fucking right now. They're not spooky. They're fucking. It's different. Spiders don't deserve that from us. Um, and they're so small. And I'm just tired of being so afraid of things that are so much smaller than me, you know? And I feel like everything on this earth, like, has a purpose, you know? Like, fucking flies uh, digest the things or whatever. And, like, you know, they break things down. And uh, uh, spiders eat, eat them and birds eat that. And birds shit seeds. And everything has a purpose. <laughs> so, like, let me not be so disrespectful to these spiders. Um, and I'm uh, big. I'm, like, oh, you know, several, uh, like, a thousand times more big. Like, you know, and they're more afraid of me than I am of them type thing, you know? Um, so I decided to face my sphere first with a spider that was outside of my window named Clarence. Um, and Clarence was real big. <laughs> Clarence was huge, but Clarence was outside, so it was chill. Um, and, and Clarence would just lay on the web and just kind of like stretch out his little legs like, nah, nah, nah. and I was like, Clarence, I hope you catch some food. Have a good day. Um, and so I started off chill on the other side of some glass and it was all good until one night when I was getting ready to go to bed, fucking weed free, just raw dog in life. Um, <laughs> I was getting ready to go to bed, and I saw a spider on my wall that was, like, this big in my house, not on the other side of the glass. And I said, Clarence, is that you? Was I too friendly? Are you inside now? <laughs> oh, you got too comfortable. Now you're in the house. And, and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do catch and release because I respect your life. I respect your life. I don't want to kill you. I don't want you to die. I want you to keep living, keep doing your thing. Just not right here, but I want you to keep <laughs> doing your thing. So I'm going to try to catch you. I'm going to release you. That's what we're going to do today. So I, of course, put on a robe uh, to protect all of my skins, and I put gloves over my robe. <laughs> and covered all the space so that there's no way, because you never know. No, maybe they're crawlers, maybe they're jumpers. Some of them are jumpers, and you don't know till you're really in there. And so I got a cup, and I got a piece of paper, and I was like, I'm going to catch and release that thing. I'm going to catch and release that thing. That's what we're going to do. We respect life around here. We're going to catch and release that thing. And I got a cup and paper, cup and paper method. You know the cup and that paper method. You grab it with the cup, slide the paper in, take it outside, boom, let that thing go. Um, <laughs> so I stood there with my robe and my gloves and my cup and my paper, and I was ready to get it. And I was like, I'm going to catch you. I'm going to release you. This is love. This is life. You know, this is fear. But also it's respect. So <laughs> and I stood there. And I stood there for literally 10 minutes. I just watched the minutes on my clock change. And I was like, all right, well, it's 11.57. But 11.58, I'm going to catch that. I'm going to move at 11.50. Next thing you know, it's like 12.15. And I'm just sweating because I shouldn't be wearing a robe. It's too hot. It's too hot to have a robe on. And I haven't made a single move. Um, <laughs> 
And so then I just left my room because he started crawling and he went to the ceiling and right above my bed. And so I did what you could do when there's a spider right above your bed. You take all the sheets off the bed and you go, I guess I sleep in the living room now. <laughs> it was the other option. But I'm making, I'm making my way and I'm making my steps. Um, and I did end up Googling just for a second, just for a little second, natural remedies to kill spiders. Just for a second. But um, I didn't do it. I backtracked off of that. Uh, I watched a video this lady who got over her fear of spiders and she uh, just started, she became like a spider scientist. She was letting them crawl all over her fingers. She got real comfortable. Um, and I was like, wow, maybe I could be like her. Um, and it was about 10 minutes later when I went back in my room and saw that it left. It was in the kitchen. I grabbed all the sheets, ran back into the room, uh, closed the door, put a towel under the door um, to keep the spider out. I used to do that to keep the smoke in. Things have changed. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and I went to bed, and it only took an hour, and I just feel like that's progress. <laughs> Thank you. Keep up, everybody. Woo! Our guest today is originally from Paris, glamorous, and of French Algerian origins. So cool. She's so cool. She's so cool. She's been making a huge impression on the UK comedy scene despite only starting her comedy career in 2017, including winning the Breaking Talent Award in 2019. Please welcome to the stage and to the mic, the incredible Celia A.B. <laughs> Lovely to be here. I acknowledge the accent. I'm from Paris, as Deb said, but I moved to Birmingham on purpose. <laughs> uh, I've been in Birmingham for seven years willingly. Um, I'm fine. It's fine. Um, now the reason I moved there is because on day one, I saw the funniest thing I've seen in my life. Um, it was a really, really drunk guy singing um, Oasis, She's Electric, to a vending machine. <laughs> at 11 a.m. So... Everything made sense. Um, we're here to talk about therapy. I don't, I don't really get therapy. Um, I like to substitute it for other things, um, cheaper things, let's say. Um, I go swimming. Anybody here like swimming? Yeah, I love swimming. The reason I started swimming is because I've quit smoking cigarettes. I used to smoke tons, and then they said you have to replace it with something else. Um, I'll be honest, swimming is good. It's not as good as smoking. <laughs> It will never be as good as smoking. There's no such thing as a social swimmer. <laughs> right? After a couple of pints, you're not at risk of doing a couple laps. Like, no one's worried. Um, but it's, it kind of got me thinking, because I've started going to this really fancy pool in central London, because um, my boyfriend works there and I get in for free. Um, <laughs> And it showed me something about the difference between men and women in terms of sports and how they approach exercise. Um, so in the pool I go to, you've got slow lane, medium lane, fast lane. The other day I walk in and I see on the fast lane, not one, not two, but three of the oldest men alive. <laughs> like there's museums after them. They're like, <laughs> like... And they're not swimming. They're not even... They're walking in the pool, just having a lovely stroll. Just, how's Margaret? Just having a lovely, lovely little stroll. And on the other side, on the slow lane, is a tank of a woman who looks like she's fighting for the right to vote. <laughs> she's like, every stroke is like, oh, come on, one more, we can do it. Now, there's no morals to it. <laughs> the only thing I will say is we need to lie on our CVs a bit more. <laughs> I think so, because Three of the oldest men alive were in the fast lane, and I was judging them, as it should be. Um, I think it's quite interesting, though, because I've been swimming, and I quite like it. I really, really do enjoy swimming. Um, the reason I like it is because you get the endorphins after exercise. You guys know that. I'm not breaking up to you. Um, but people tell you that um, you're addicted to exercise. Do you, do you get those people who tell you they're addicted to running? Wankers? Just... <laughs> like... You know those people. I just couldn't go a day without running. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I've seen you go a day without running. Stop lying. 
wasting my day here. I don't like them because they're, well, they're, they're liars because what they're addicted to is the endorphins that you get afterwards. It's not the actual running bit. Do you know what I mean? It's like a heroin addict. They've got the decency to not go, I'm just getting really into spoons. <laughs> at the moment. Do you know what I mean? It's decency there. It's good for your mental health, though. It's really good for your mental health to work out. Um, I think I'm, I'm quite an anxious person. Anyone else? Yeah, I'm quite an anxious person. I think it comes from how much I use my phone. I'm so addicted to my phone, and I think that social media is to blame. Because social media, if you go on Instagram, it's just beautiful people shouting, hey, by the way, I'm beautiful at you <laughs> all day. And I think it can't be healthy. With that in mind, we have to remember that it's not real, right? Social media is not real. You can get 100,000 likes on a post and then you go out into the real world and the old lady at the post office is really rude to you. <laughs> and she's on OnlyFans. Do you know what I mean? It's like, there's... <laughs> it's not real. But I think that that chips away at you, that sort of stuff. I think that we've done tons of work in terms of body confidence and body positivity, but I don't think we're quite there yet. Would you agree? Like, the other day, I was just minding my own business, just out of just at a crossing, minding my own business, not asking for anyone's attention. And on the floor there, don't tell me to look right, actually. <laughs> like, what does that even mean? Like, can I have a day off? Like, I think we need to go back to the Renaissance. You know, there's beautiful paintings of ladies just lying around naked, doing things that don't require to be naked <laughs> in, in any way. You know those paintings? Beautiful naked women doing the laundry. Yeah, they should, should put a jumper on. <laughs> you would be more comfy. Uh, so I've started this movement where I go to random museums in London and I knit half a jumper and I put it on all of these Renaissance paintings and I change it seasonally. So... On the Mona Lisa, I might put a Hawaiian top <laughs> around the summer. But I think that we need to go back to that, because I think that showing your body grows your confidence. And I think that we need to work on that. So here's what I do. If I feel a bit down, I get one tit out. <laughs> and I do the washing up. It really... <laughs> honestly, it turns your day around. It really does. It really does. How often do you feel the breeze of London? <laughs> on one single nipple. Incredible. It feels incredible. You can see it age faster. It's, it feels incredible. Um, the reason I do stand-up is not because I want to get on the telly. It's not because I want to tour. It's because I've got this specific dream of mine, um, which is to one day attend um, Will I Am's funeral. That's my specific dream. And the reason I want to attend Will I Am's funeral is because I wrote this joke that only works at Will I Am's funeral. <laughs> it doesn't work anywhere else. So picture this, it's Will I Am's funeral. Um, <laughs> Fergie's here, she's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then the tall one here. You don't know his name, it's fine. <laughs> um, Everyone in the Black Eyed Peas is like sad, but like in sync. <laughs> and then they'd bring me on stage to rumptious applause. They would go, we've got a very good treat for you. We've got the wonderful Celia AB. We can't believe we got her. It, they'll say that. <laughs> and then everyone will go clap, clap, clap. And I go on stage and Will I am's there. And then I go. <laughs> And then I go, thank you very much for having me at Will I Am's gorgeous funeral. And may I say, Will, he was. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be very honest with you, sometimes this joke does not work. <laughs> but I will take it to mine and his grave. It is, <laughs> it is I am going to crowd surf on that casket. <laughs> and on this note, <laughs> And I'm going to have to win you back. <laughs> Thank you. See you right there, everybody. Uh, See you right there. Hello. So good. We very much enjoyed your stand-up comedy. Uh, you're new to The Guilty Feminist. 
I am indeed. Um, I've, I've never heard of feminists. <laughs> <laughs> You've never well, heard of feminists? No. Let us no. induct you in our ways. Lock the doors. <laughs> One of us. One of us. <laughs> One of us. We're kidding. We know that you are a it massive fizzing ther- uh, feminist. Um, <laughs> we, I nearly called you a therapist then because we're about to be talking about therapy. Yes. yes. Um, can we bang down on the table... Because I feel like... Can we bang down no, I mean, on the table? <laughs> sorry, sorry. What is happening? I can told we, you. Can we bang down on the table what our therapy experience is like? Just because I did a podcast a couple of years ago with Roisin Conaty, maybe about three years mm-hmm. ago now, where I did stand-up about how my experience with therapists had been sort of risible. I'd done therapy twice, six weeks each. And the funny things that had happened during that and why I'd never done it again. Mm. And, I mean, it was stand-up comedy. So, you know, sometimes you're reductive, you're hyperbolic, because if you over-explain everything, it's not funny. And also, truthfully, that had been my experience with therapy. But I got lots of emails from people going, no, don't put people off therapy, which I didn't think the episode did. But I could Mm. see how people might have thought that I did. And lots of therapists was like, no, 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 you just didn't find the right therapist. So lockdown, I was like, okay, this is my opportunity. I Go got, back, get in, find the flow. Yeah, well, I just thought, A, I've got time to find the right person because I'm trapped in my house. And <laughs> B, like, I don't know, normally touring and running around. You know, like, I'm like, oh, yeah. But also everything became acceptable via Zoom. Yeah. So instead of having to schlep to somebody's Oof. house, which I hated because they'd always make you wait outside. Um, (laughs) hated it standing outside in the rain just waiting for somebody to let me in so they could judge me I hated it and then you've got to go to the therapist yeah (laughs) so 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 the zoom part really appealed to me and I also figured I needed it more because I didn't really have my regular sources of people to Mm. talk to so much because I'm just like Mm. hanging out with people and it, does anyone want you to FaceTime them and go, I'm feeling down? Whereas if you go to the pub with someone, how have you been? Yeah, pretty good. Oh, no, I'm fine. Yeah, hey, I'm great. Good enough to get dressed and come here. But <laughs> let me tell you the truth. Exactly. <laughs> it comes out. With good yeah, friends, it sort of comes yeah, out yeah. where they go, oh, da 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 And then you end up having the chat. So my support <laughs> network went away. Because also you'd, I didn't feel like messaging my friends like, I'm having a tough time. They're like, really? You yeah. know, like, mm. and of course we could do that. And sometimes we did do that for each other. But it just wasn't the same. So I found, I've had two therapists and a hypnotherapist mm. in lockdown. Not all at the Ooh. same time. And I do think it has really, really worked. So all those people that emailed me three years ago to say I was wrong, you were right. <laughs> um, I hope you're still listening and I don't, didn't leave furious at that moment. I think so that's my experience. Celia? So I, I, I definitely need therapy. Um, but I'm just going to keep going until I really does. need it. Um, <laughs> let's see how far this can go. That's what I did. Um, I, I th- regret it. I think it's like... See, here's the bad problem with it. I know it's brilliant, and every friend of mine that does therapy, they, like, have a different attitude at parties afterwards. Like, like, <laughs> they're like, people who get therapy are kind of smug, aren't they? They're like, oh, <laughs> you haven't found happiness yet. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'm sorry, babes. But, but, you, I, you, but, like, you can feel better. But I feel like... <laughs> that that kind of energy. It's like yeah, someone, yeah, yeah. like, people who do yoga. <laughs> oh, it's like, <laughs> it's, I feel like there's, like... So here's my thing. I know that it would make me feel happier. Um, but I also know this, that when, when am I finished then? Do you know mm, what I mean? Never. Because so, like, mm. th- like right now I can puddle along, <laughs> ignoring all this stuff. No, we're not going to go there. <laughs> Ignore <laughs> that door and just puddle along. But I feel like if I go to a therapist, it's like, do you know when you see those videos of shopping centers opening all at once. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> like Black starts, Friday vibes. Yeah, and yeah. everything starts flooding in. I feel like the second <laughs> uh, someone asks me very honestly, how are you? <laughs> I feel like it's going to... Someone gonna, that wants to know. Yeah, I feel like... And that has to listen. And that has to listen. Um, I feel like we're going to be there forever. So, mm. Well, here's the news that I think I have for you now as a recent convert to therapy. <laughs> and all recent converts are zealots. I wish I'd had therapy in my 20s so much and I wish I had therapy in my 30s because I feel like I would have reprogrammed, rehealed, repaired and I would be much... I just feel like if I'd done it earlier, I would be some kind of powerhouse. Yeah. And I feel like now I'm like, oh... I think I'm, I'm not getting therapy to stay humble. 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, maybe, yeah, maybe. Mm. 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 But if I had my time over again, mm. I would figure it out a lot <laughs> earlier. Yeah. I just wish I had because I think, I think part of feminism. Okay, this is my latest theory on feminism. Right. Okay, but also I have to bang out on the table. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I never... Can I just take a note because I don't want to forget it, and yeah. then because I think I've come up with the meaning of life here. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not banging the table, and I feel very weird about it. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you my experience with therapy. Um, so, <laughs> so you're French and me too. Um, <laughs> so uh, my experience, I think, I would say is probably I had uh, what the kids call a crisis, a breakdown. My brain exploded when I was in my junior year of college. It was great. I threw a burrito at my mom. So much fun. Um, she was trying to make me eat, and I was like, I don't want it! Um, good stuff. Um, and uh, my mom has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder, um, as has my grandma, but she's like, I just have anxiety. Um, and she's like, sometimes I get nervous, whatever. <laughs> I come from a, a long line of people who deal with the mental health issues in different ways. Um, and I had a breakdown. I ended up, bless you, girl. <laughs> there was an adorable sneeze in the audience. It wasn't that adorable. It was really cute. You're a feminist, but that was the cutest sneeze. The cutest little sneeze. I'm just... Oh, that's like a little bunny sneezing. A thousand percent. Little... So good. It's a queef of a sneeze. Um, uh, yeah, so basically I went to the mental hospital and my mom was like, I have a history with mental health, so I think this would be best. Um, I was in the mental hospital. It wasn't a great experience. Um, left there knowing that I would need some kind of help, but not what kind. Um, left there with a uh, prescription um, for medicine that was way strong, but this is not the episode about mental health medication. Um, went to uh, a therapist who was quite cool or whatever, but then I moved, didn't see her anymore. Um, then moved to California, found a judgmental therapist that made me feel like she was a judgmental gynecologist. It was insane. I was like... I smoked weed, and she was like, well, that's what's wrong with you. Um, and I needed to realize that in my own time. Um, <laughs> I was like, but don't make me feel bad about something that I'm clearly going to do every day. Um, and <laughs> I was like, ma'am, be gentle with me. Um, and so, yeah, so saw that person, um, didn't have any, um, like, mental health care for a while, was about to move out here, got a bit spooked, um, got some new medication, um, love that, great. Um, and then I think with my n understanding that I was dealing with a mental health condition, not knowing how to navigate it and what was the best way to navigate it, um, it got to a point where I just felt like I did want to feel better. Yeah. Um, and so I did a round of uh, NHS CBT. Shout out to the NHS. Shout out to um, Gemma. Does CBT um, work? Well, what I wanted to figure out was um, if I'm having highs and lows, if you make it very simple, it's the very basic language about a bipolar disorder, if I'm having periods of high and low, how do I know when I'm approaching them? Because the thing is, um, you can kind of, there, there are signs, there are triggers, and there are things like that, so you can kind of get ahead of it, and it might not be so high or so low. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of my aim, and so we just spent some time looking into that. And whether that's what CBT is or not, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> um, so that was that time with Gemma, and then fast forward to the person I'm currently seeing and have been seeing... And um, we have a um, good time. She's a nice lady. Yeah. And has she helped you understand any patterns, anything from your childhood, filled in any missing pieces? We dig into childhood bits. And basically I'll come and she'll be like, how do you want to spin the session? And I'll be like, work is stressing me out, man. Or I'll be like, 
romance is a mistake. Um, I just love it. We cover the whole. We cover the whole shebang. You know, like right now, she's helping me um, prepare to go home, and the fact that it will be uh, hard, but it could also be nourishing. And I was like, "Wow, thanks, P." Um, yeah, <laughs> but I know, like you're you, like we're in like a cult at some point in your like childhood, and that has to have done some shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Especially, I imagine, with trust, even trusting a therapist must be difficult. Mm. Right? Um, oh, that's interesting. I don't know. Well, the one that I have now I really like. I had a, a one that was really good for a while but wasn't the right fit for me. It was just things like, I don't know, you know when someone uses certain language? Yeah. I, I worry that she might listen to this. I don't think – she never listened to the podcast. Well, it's fine. No, she, she didn't. Okay, she's a professional. Yeah, she didn't Who's listen. Who's she going to tell? She probably signs up for him. She can't tell nobody. That is true. That is true. We do have patient confidentiality that only goes one way. Ethics, mother So, mother. yeah. No. She would just – she was great, but she just sort of like – I don't think she literally did this, but it was like – to sum it up in one example, she called me Debbie instead of Deborah. Ew. You know, she didn't, but that tells you what else she did. Do you know what I mean? Like, she never yeah. did that, but it was that kind of thing. Oh, I know. She used to call my mother mum. Mm. You know, when somebody says, and how would mum feel about that? Mm. And I'd be like, I don't know. Why well, I don't know your mum. Mm. Like, yeah. I, and that's... The concept of mum? Yeah, like, and when someone says mum, I think they're talking about their mum, and I've just never liked that when other people have done yeah, that's that. that's awful. And I just like, you know, would, would you know, well, feel? what did dad say? Mm. You know, like, well... <laughs> Okay, if you're talking about my father, he died some years ago, so he didn't say anything, but are you talking about in my childhood, what did your father say? I just found it so... And it was just, like, she had some great insights, to be fair, but I didn't really look forward to the sessions, and I think it was just not the right chemistry. She was great, and I'm sure there were some people who would think she was incredible and want the personalization of someone saying mum because then that'll evoke... But I don't call my mum mum. I call my mum mother. So that doesn't... uh, Which tells you a lot about why I think therapy. But (laughs) I... It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. That was perfectly lovely. But I decided to see an American hypnotherapist, a New Yorker, mm. because I thought it's, it's on Zoom. It doesn't matter whether they're in Camden or, you yeah, know. The right one yeah. might be in Spain. Yeah, well, yeah, no, the Spain. right one is always in New York because that is the home of therapy. Yeah. That's <laughs> where it was invented. Well, that's what I figured. I yeah. figured I want one of those Woody Allen therapists. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Not Woody Allen. Just let's take him out of it. But <laughs> I don't want yeah. Woody Allen's therapist because he's he shouldn't be doing the patient <laughs> confidentiality. But you know what I mean? Like, I just wanted that sort of thing. Yeah. Anyway, so I found somebody who I really relate to, I really connect to, but she's really good at helping me see the patterns. And she just lets me to do whatever I want in the session. So if I'm feeling really good, we can talk about that. If I'm, yeah. you know. But how do you not, like, fall in love with them? Because, <laughs> like, like if I you... see someone that's, like, makes me feel better and oh. they listen <gasps> and I'm lying down <laughs> oh, and, then, well, and, they, and they maybe pat me on the heads. I've never lied down. I don't think they do that. Don't, don't they, they not do that? No. No. Not lying I don't down. Think, I, I think, if I you're, think it, are you imagining doing this therapy naked? I think I think I'm, I am imagine. Oh, what I'm imagining, Deborah, the couch, I couldn't possibly the... say. Um, I think my ideal therapist is uh, a little oh my puppy. God, my, sorry, my um, jeans are just <laughs> all in my fucking vagina. <laughs> my ideal See, if you therapist... do that at therapy, you are really, you know, crossing a line because <laughs> that's what they call transference. Ooh, that's what they call transference. Trans- I love that Not show. Not the jeans in the vagina. The no, love one. transference is when you fall in love with your therapist for these exact reasons. Mm. And counter-transference is when they feel the same way. Oh, they would. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, we would bang on the table. <laughs> yeah, you got to bang on the table. I think it's, it's quite interesting, though, with um, therapists, because I think that my mother works in a... Well, she doesn't anymore. She used to work in a mental health institution in France. Mm. And she, she used to work very long hours. And I think that seeing how tired therapists are... Yeah. Because obviously they work. That's what I don't. If I was to get a therapist, I would want all the attention. So I would say, mm. I don't want you to see anyone else before <laughs> or, or after me. <laughs> and, and if I saw someone come out, I would go, Who is she, actually? Yeah, what is you, that? And why is Deborah Francis White here? <laughs> yeah. I feel uh, like you may really need therapy. I am. If you are not prepared. <laughs> but we're to... not going there, baby. 
<laughs> We're keeping I, it all in until I'm 30. I, <laughs> oh, it's gonna I mean, be so fun. When I'm 30, I'm gonna have a different walk. That's my vibe. <laughs> walk. I'm gonna have it. When, this is my plan. Um, hit 30, retire. Mm. Yep. Have a different walk. When I'm 38, get inexplicably really fit. Yeah. Like get abs. Ooh, Do you know and what like I mean? um, late. Adult onset athleticism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I still believe I'm going to have that. Yeah, yeah same. Absolutely. Yeah. One day. And then just like get to 40, write a novel. Yeah. Novel gets made into a film. Naturally. I play the part. Of course. And then I get therapy. <laughs> <laughs> After the film. <laughs> That's the one. Plan. My theory on why this is a great plan, um, but also why when you do get to therapy, which I know that you will, mm-hmm. and it, a lot of stand-up comics, uh, like, use comedy as therapy. They talk to the audience. The audience pay them. Like, it's... Yeah. it's I, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the reason I am happy I've done therapy anyway... No, I shouldn't comment on what anyone else should do. The reason I'm happy I got therapy is I think over the last however many years, through various things, finding my biological mother, like doing lots of different... It feels like I'm putting different pieces yeah. of the mm-hmm. jigsaw into me. Been and even when they're it. scary things, even when they don't go to plan, mm. it still feels better to be whole and have that yeah. bit of jigsaw in me. And what I'm thinking is, this is my new theory, this is the thing I jotted down so I didn't forget it because I thought I might mm. have accidentally come up with the meaning of life, is <laughs> I think that... This is my guess about the next phase for feminism Mm. and sort of almost what feminism really is, has always been sort of grasping to do, is that feminism is ultimately about women being able to be human. Yeah. It's what I say about why Fleabag was so popular is I think Fleabag was very popular because she was unapologetically feminine or female or woman. She wasn't like, oh, uh, you know, like a woman who on the TV is like, she, you know, she's like, she's a man. Like, I'm blokey. Yeah, exactly. She whatever. didn't, she didn't. That's why I do this stuff is because I, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, she wasn't presenting. It's not, the, I'm not the other girls. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Mm. She was absolutely woman. And, uh, but what she revealed to us was the hungry, libidinous, lonely, lazy, frightened, joyful, naughty human being yeah. mm. deep down inside every woman. Inside every woman there is a human and it, that is often masked by womanhood because the judgment, the, the performance of femininity or the rejection of femininity, mm. uh, which are only two options, are both exhausting. So you can either perform or you can reject, but both of them, and you're always having to prove, no, but I can even though, or but, but that's not because I'm a woman, or da 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 yeah. da So all of that noise. And then any other intersections of identity that are projected upon you as luggage to carry. So blackness, brownness, gender fluidity, uh, sexual orientation other than heterosexuality disability, all of those things are things for other people to get past and for you to kind of go, no, 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 but... but, 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 but." And sometimes we spend so much time in our identity, defending our identity, being proud of our identity, that we forget inside, inside here is the lizard brain as well that wants to fight and fuck or, you know, just Mm. eat or Mm. sleep. Love sleep. Oh, sleep is so fucking good. (laughs) (laughs) And so that's why I ultimately think I'm happy I had therapy and it's yeah. helped my feminism because the more pieces of the jigsaw I fill in, the more human You can be a full person. I feel, yeah. You don't have yeah. to be um, excellent or extraordinary in order to fight the patriarchy. Sometimes fighting the patriarchy is fucking existing and enjoying Absolutely. that. I think we don't have to always be a voice for something. That's one thing, it's resting mm. as well. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think that when you're a woman, especially if you do comedy or anything related to even mm. being in front of a room of people, yeah. you feel a responsibility to say things and have opinions. But sometimes mm. you just want to have a hot chocolate. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and you said they wouldn't learn anything. <laughs> See you in AAP, everybody! <laughs> I've been listening to the Guilty Feathers and me, Amber Francis White, guest co-host, Kimber Bob and I'm very 
special guest, Celia Ray B. The recording engineer was Grundy Lissimbro. Music was by Mark Hodge. The producer was Tom Solinsky from the Spotted Lady Shop. Thanks to Zoe, Sally, and everyone at King's Place. It's for us all who you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes with the Guilty Fabulous, dot com. tough two years so while we will still be bringing you cutting edge issues and extremely brilliant uh, activists and organizations that you can get behind and involved in sometimes we're just going to be bringing you the hardcore ruffles <laughs> now we just feel like we need it a little bit do you know what I mean just sometimes um, so this show if you have come here to learn too damn bad yeah I, <laughs> I'm not promising a lot of learning. no I'm not saying you won't learn anything but if you've come to really like you know I'm saying that yeah <laughs> I'm, a, I'm what undermines them <laughs> <laughs> oh this poor woman she's going through so much today oh god <laughs> The Guilty Feminist is provided exclusively from Acast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts.